the ANC president, Mr. Ramaphosa, has made it very clear that, for example, the policy of black economic empowerment right. is non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a key pillar of ANC policy. Now, will the opposition parties accept the continuation of this policy? Some will say yes, others right. say no. What's your expectation then? Do you believe that we'll see... A so in this really controversial expose by Moletse Mbeki on Bloomsburg, he's actually explaining how the ANC has actually colluded in multiple ways to damage and destroy or collapse state-owned companies. Let's listen to what he has to say about this, and I'll be back with a really interesting analysis by Prince Machele on the ANC's role in collapsing South Africa's economy. Let's just start with maybe priority number one to get this economy back on track. We saw first quarter GDP, uh, the economy contracted slightly. What does this new government need to prioritize? Well, the, the, there are two major obstacles to the South African economy. One are the companies that are owned by the state. Uh, which are the logistics companies which control the railways and control the ports and used to control the airlines. Mm. These companies have more or less collapsed in the hands of the ANC government. Mm. And this has created a major problem for the trade industry in South Africa. Uh, the collapse of the railway industry has meant that to transport minerals. We are a mineral exporter, right. such as coal, such as granite, to transport iron ore. Company, mining companies are having to use trucks. Mm -hmm. a and this is very expensive and very inefficient. So that has to be priority number one. Mm. Priority number two is the supply of electricity. Mm. Supply of electricity in South Africa is controlled by a state-owned company. Mm -hmm. And this has completely failed to, to keep up with the demand. So we're having blackouts. We have been having blackouts for the last 17 years in our economy. Right, but they've improved slightly over the past few months. Yes, but for industry, mm. uh, two months or three months, you can't plan a new manufacturing industry on the basis of an improvement in two months. Mm. It has to be reliable over the long, over the long term. The third obstacle to, to, to investment mm. is the policy of the ANC government called Black Economic Empowerment. Right. That is one of the major obstacles. Right. So then, yeah, so Maletti, I was going to ask you, I mean, uh, we heard last night uh, the ANC has agreed on this government of national unity. Uh, how would you advise them uh, now that they have made this agreement, and especially if we think about the opposition parties that are now potentially going to be a part of this coalition? Well, at the end of the day, the opposition parties have to accept the ANC's solution to these problems. But, th but they've said they, they don't want to. W well... That's why we don't really know yeah. which of the many political parties that are in parliament will actually join this government of national unity. Mm. Because the ANC and the ANC president, Mr. Ramaphosa, has made it very clear that, for example, the policy of black economic empowerment right. is non-negotiable. Mm. It, is, it is a key pillar of ANC policy. Now, will the opposition parties accept the continuation of this policy? Some will say yes, others right. say no. What's your yeah, brilliant comment. What do you guys think? I think it's really interesting. And, uh, you know, I've just really slowly began listening to Mbeki. Uh, this Mbeki Moletti he has a really interesting set of videos on YouTube when, in analyzing South Africa's, you know, political um, climate and South Africa's political economy. Really brilliant. And um, in this video, anyway, we can see here he's exposing how the ANC, you know, just like how... Um, uh, uh, you know, Rob Herself actually speaks about, and not just not just Rob Herself, but also a lot of commentators on ANC saying that the ANC doesn't do politics, but it does logistics. This is uh, one of the major terms by Neil De Beer in his description of the ANC. He says that the ANC doesn't do politics, but it does logistics. 
And um, the commentary here by Mbeki Moletti here speaks about how the ANC has gone for, you know, those state-owned companies that are involved in logistics and somehow its operations within those agencies and those companies have caused their collapse. But anyway, in this video, I thought to have an analysis by, you know, this Prince Marshall, a really interesting article he published on the Daily Maverick, where he speaks about how the ANC has mastered the art of demolition. I, demolition. I thought this was a really interesting report and we'll just go quickly to really understand the 30-year trajectory that the ANC has impacted, especially since the takeoff um, of the government um, from Tabum, President Thabo Mbeki um, by, you know, former President Jacob Zuma. So it speaks about here, Prince Marcella speaks about here that the combination of ANC incompetence and corruption has ultimately broken ESCOM's back. No amount of noise must distract us from one important truth. Having collapsed ESCOM, the ANC can never rebuild it. This is now from Prince Marshall. He speaks about that how since the dramatic uh, departure of Andre de Reuter from ESCOM following the release of the tell-all interview with ENCA, South Africans have been talking. White South Africans who feel that one of their own has been ill-treated by a black government have been reluctant to jump into the public arena to defend him openly, fearing the easy accusation of racism. Even black people who believe that the writer has been treated unfairly don't finish their statements without adulterating their support by pointing out that the writer has failed to end rolling blackouts or that in his lamentations, he should have eschewed matters of ideology. Only ANC leaders and their supporters felt emboldened to grab hammer and nail to publicly crucify the man, excoriating and casting him as an incompetent right-wing saboteur plotting to subvert the ANC-led government. Even such embarrassing incompetence as Fikile Imbalule did not, dis did not miss the opportunity. The Reuter presented for them to shine. So this is from Prince Marcelle now. He speaks about how under the glare of cameras, Mbalula opted to forget that as Minister of Transport, he himself has, no, has, has fixed no road and improved no transport in South Africa. In his fractured English, this is from Prince Marcelli now, and grotesque, grotesque incoherence, the clownish ANC Secretary General proceeded to lampoon himself. Satisfied that he had hammered the Reuter enough, Mbalula concluded the ANC is not corrupt. So Prince Marcelli is out with daggers all over the place, trying, you know, aiming to criticize the ANC, you know, for exposing and really lamenting on um, Andre de Reuter's, uh, you know, regime as ESCOM boss at the time. So Prince Marcelle concludes on the Daily, Daily Maverick saying that the ANC has been complicit in corruption and state capture in a state and undeletable finding made by the Zondo Commission. The, state, the party's own president, Cyril Ramaphosa, has told us that the ANC is accused number one in corruption. If Mbalula has a mind, and if he needs more evidence, he should simply spend a minute remembering his own engagement with his dear friend, Brett Kebel, the man who corrupted ANC Youth League leaders beyond repair. But we must be fair. In relation to the mess at ESCOM, Mbalula's major problem is failure to tame his ungovernable mouth. This is from Prince Marcelle now. And of course, the company was looted and collapsed by Mbalula's comrades and not him personally. All ANC presidents since 1994, from Nelson Mandela to Cyril Ramaphosa, have failed to invest in building new power generation capacity at ESCOM. And we see that, you know, Tabo Mbeki had this same argument, uh, you know, in his speech and the 30 years of, of democracy speech which he had, and where he exposed how um, the power generation station at, um, uh, you know, the two power generation stations that were actually contract contracted to, in, to an Indian company were actually stopped because because um, the ANC had the policy that these Indian companies must incorporate policies of BEE, broad-based black em economic empowerment, to which these Indian companies refused. And as a result, um, I think it's Ma, Ma I, I don't remember the name of the power station now, but as a result, these power stations actually are still left, you know, unconstructed or repaired in that regard. 
So Prince Mashela continues, saying that in 2007, former President Abombeki apologized on behalf of the government for the ANC's catastrophic neglect. Alas, an apology cannot produce electricity. What the Reuter has alerted us to are problems relating to one vital state-owned company, ESCOM, whose failure is to our country what the heart failure is to a living organism. This is why there is now talk of a possible collapse of the state that might result from a total collapse of our national electricity grid. Chris Machole goes on to speak about how when people talk about problems at ESCOM, the ANC is happy to fold its arms as if such problems have nothing to do with the party. But we know that it is ANC's ministers who have been meddling with governance and management at ESCOM. It is the ANC that has collapsed ESCOM, says Prince Machele. ESCOM was established 100 years ago in 1923 by the then government of Prime Minister Jan Smuts to provide electricity for industrializing the entire country beyond a handful of mining centers. Operationally, the company was built by the globally renowned South African scientist Henrik van der Beel, who ran it professionally and profitably until his death in 1948. All the governments that came after that of Smuts, from the Pact government of 1924 all the way to the Apartheid government, appreciated the need to keep on strengthening ESCOM and to never undermine it technically and managerially. Things went wrong when the incompetence of the ANC took over the company from 1994 they extended electricity provision to millions of previously unelectrified people without building more generation capacity. So this is a big, major flaw, according to Prince Machele from the ANC, that even though it was fighting to really redeem its image as a black liberation movement, and even though, you know, reports have argued that the first years of the ANC leadership or the order Nelson Mandela and Tabombeki really helped to electrify a lot of the unelectrified areas of South Africa. It failed to build more electricity generation capacity, which at the end of the day ended up, you know, decapitulating some of the efficiency of ESCOM. So Prince Mashela goes on to say that, you know, the idea of electrifying people, electrifying people without building more generation capacity is like having a boat that you keep loading with more and more passengers without the vessel becoming any bigger. It will eventually sink, he says. Henrik van der Beel must have turned in his grave as he watched the ANC destroy the company he built. It is a combination of ANC incompetence and corruption that has ultimately broken ESCOM's back. What the Reuter saw is a result of almost three decades of neglect and primitive looting, effectively milking the cow dry and cutting off its udder. No amount of noise must distract us from one important truth, having collapsed ESCOM, that ANC is to blame. It say, he says, Prince Marcella here on the Daily Maverick says that the ANC has mastered how to demolish and not to build. Is there anything Fikile Imbaldula can show he has built? That's what Prince Machele argues. He says also that ESCOM is only one among many state-owned companies the ANC has run to the ground. And this is exactly what Mbeki Moletse in this uh, interview actually speaks about, that the ANC actually has run, you know, um, uh, the aviation ministry and some other of these um, logistics state-owned companies to the ground. And he says that here Prince Machele continues saying that he mentioned some of these industries, some of these companies. He said, think about Transnet, Prasa, Denel, and the Post Office, South African Airways, and so on and so forth. Everything that the ANC touches turns to dust. The list focuses only on state-owned companies. A wider view reveals that even more depressing truth that the ANC cannot govern a modern, modern state. So it appears like, uh, you know, the GNU, the government of national unity might now be a, a better approach. And since the electorates really spoke um, in these elections that, you know, they do not want the majority in the name of the ANC governing anymore because all they've recorded since, since um, 1994 has been a downward slide in, in um, service delivery 
country, in all in the collapse of many state-owned companies, probably the government of national unity might be a way to resurrect and maintain the survival of the state of the ANC as a governing body. And, and that's exactly what Prince Machele here argues on this uh, really interesting article on the Daily Maverick. Prince Machele goes on to say that, look at what the ANC has done to public education. 80% of public schools are dysfunctional and universities have been turned into theaters of chaos where vice chancellors are no longer safe. Even dancers have been deployed to lead serious universities only to be ejected a few years later with a golden handshake. To gauge the extent of South Africa's educational problem, ask yourself the following question. If Angie Mochega, who if Angie Mochega were the principal of the school of a school in your neighborhood, would you take your children there? What about a university run by Blade in Zimande? The ANC has turned public hospitals to dust, and he, Prince Machele argues, let us be honest. All the hospitals built by the apartheid government in black communities used to function better than they have done since the ANC's bunch of incompetents took them over. Do you think ANC politicians go to Tembisa Hospital when they are sick? There is a dramatic minister who frequently shows up at crime scenes after people have been murdered or after women have been raped. The minister looks like a gangster himself, but his threatening looks have not intimidated the criminals who have literally taken over the country. I believe here he's speaking about uh, Becky Selle, and we know that Becky Selle has actually, um, you know, left the minister of police role uh, recently. So he, sp he speaks about how Becky Selle, <laughs> he speaks about anyway, that the minister looks like a gangster himself, but his threatening looks have not intimidated the criminals who have literally taken over the country. Prince Machele goes on to say that to kill a human being in South Africa under the ANC is easier than killing a chicken. The areas singled out above are but a sample of critical pillars of a modern state, and the ANC has collapsed in all of them. If you want to see the collapse of governance in a concentrated form, take a drive through the central business districts of our towns and cities except Cape Town. The city of Bloemfontein now looks like the Nigerian chaos called Lagos, with putridity in the air, ubiquitous potholes and uncollected garbage all over the place. We have reached the point where even shack dwellers in informal settlements can see evidence of ANC incompetence in the squalor they live in. Their illegally connected electricity disappears for 12 hours a day, under the fancy euphemism of stage 6 load shedding. Those who live in posh suburbs now grapple with water shortages, even though our dams are full to the brim. And this is exactly what, you know, um, the vice president of the Action SA, in name of Michael Beaumont, actually was alerting in one video I made on this channel, alerting that South, Africa's, South Africa has been focusing on only the load shedding electricity crisis, but there's now a problem of water shedding that if it's not handled proper properly, would really result in doom in South Africa. So Prince Machella continues on the Daily, Daily Maverick saying that, that the ANC cannot govern used to be an allegation. Now it is a reality that everyone can see. Is there anyone who does not drive through the potholes on a daily basis? The number of bakeries and SUVs on our roads tell you something is getting worse. Is there anyone who is not affected by the blackouts? When you see the explosion of solar panels on roofs, you must stop taking Cyril Ramaphosa's twaddle seriously. In short, the ANC have morphed from being a national asset in the 1990s to becoming South Africa's greatest liability today. He says that it is a demon devouring every good thing in the country. Now, Prince Machala goes on in really this really interesting, um, you know, critique of the ANC, saying that most of the decisions taken by the ANC now are truly baffling. In the domain of foreign policy, for example, how are we to explain the ANC government's support 
But anyway, but anyway, this is some these are some really major interesting critique that Prince Marshall, a really interesting uh, writer, just came up with his um some of his writings recently, and I've been reading them. They're really interesting, and he's out with daggers here against the ANC, describing how the ANC has really destroyed a lot of South Africa, and probably for me, this is my interpretation that probably with the DA now you know, coming into the government of national unity and the IFP and the Patriotic Alliance, these are the parties that have actually openly come to, uh, you know, to the fore to say that they will be joining the government of national unity. Probably that could be uh, uh, an approach to rescuing the ANC from its silent call for help to manage South Africa in spite of all of this debacle and, you know, the damage that had actually happened to most of these state owned uh, companies and even non-state-owned companies um, in South Africa. But it's a been a, a, lo a lot of information anyway. What do you guys think about um, what Prince Mashali actually speaks about here? Write in the comments. Tell us about your experiences in South Africa. What has actually been going on? What do you see as damage across the streets in the cities where you live? Here he speaks about how Blue Fontaine is comparing Blue Fontaine to the squabble in Lagos, Nigeria, which is actually a country I'm from. And I can attest to the fact that Lagos, although as as, as a metropolis, it has actually a lot of development work needed at the moment. But now he's comparing Lagos to Bloemfontein. So what do you guys think about this comment? Share your thoughts in the comments.